I don't even know how to say this for YouTube. I really don't. Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. You have reached season number three of Teen Mom Family Reunion. I don't know how you can call this a family reunion when you guys see each other literally every day all the time. Anyway, uh, in this season of Family Reunion, they've brought couples and singles that's not a recipe for disaster now is it this is season number three and this is episode number one let's just get started this season we are claiming cheyenne and jade as the hosts cheyenne if you don't shut the hell up with all that damn screaming i know something cheyenne says that everybody has been invited but did you guys invite ashley i bet you didn't so as you can see the first set of couples to come is jade and sean and Zach and Cheyenne, of course, because they're the hosts. Why wouldn't they be first? Jade says season one, it was just the moms. Season two, they had their moms. And this time for some odd reason, it's all about love, couples, and all that jazz. So Jade and them are on the bus going towards the hotel. And she says, as a group, we've all been together a really long time. And Cheyenne says that they're almost at one year married. She says the last time they did family reunion was like a couple days before they were going to get married. Cheyenne says since then they've gotten married and they have a lot to work on already. Okay, girl. She says that she needs to take a couple seats and let Zach be the leader. And Zach says that he needs to work on his consistency. And he also says that they need to work on giving each other that quality time. Cheyenne says to Jade that you're about to get married in 17 days. And I go way back with this couple. Okay, you guys already know. I've been doing Team Mom a long freaking time. I did Young and Pregnant as well. And Sean is terrible. I don't know why she's marrying this mother freaking bum. Who cannot keep a freaking job? Okay, I do not know. Is he committing to keeping a job? Because he hasn't been able to do that in all the years I've seen him on this damn franchise. The thing that's been consistent with Sean is he can't keep a job. Jay says that her and Sean were newly engaged at the last family reunion. She says that everybody is coming to her wedding. The plan is to leave Columbia. All of them are going to leave Columbia and go straight to Jade's wedding. Jade says the goal of them coming there is for her to be a little more submissive and for him to be a little more take charge. He says that he's looking to take some responsibilities off of Jade's hands. How? By getting a job? Are you going to get a job, Sean? Are you working right now? Probably not. You're probably just, you know, MTV is your job. But MTV is not going to last forever. You see what happened to Team Mom OG, Team Mom 2, and all those other Team Mom franchises. They arrive at the hotel resort. I thought it was just going to be a rental house just like the real world. Because after all, this is just a season of the real world. Let's just be real here, MTV. Y'all ain't fooling nobody. This is where everybody's staying here. Yeah, they're going to have their own bartender in here. This is a hotel? Damn. I wonder how much it costs to stay in a hotel like this. And now they're going around looking at all of the different rooms. Damn, Cheyenne's hair looks so cute. Sean asks Zach, hey, it's been a year. How do you like the married life? Zach says nothing changes except you have your name on that paper and you have a title now. So you just gave a reason why people shouldn't get married. Zach, just hush. Sean says he's going to work on his vows while he's there. And uh, Zach says that this whole situation is going to be intense because everybody's there to work on their relationships. So after viewing the bedrooms that have the pictures of their kids on the wall and a picture of the couples on their walls in their rooms, Cheyenne and Jay come to the bartender to get something to drink. And um, number one, MTV, is it a good idea? Is it a good idea to have a bartender in a place with an addict anyway? And he's not addicted to alcohol, but that is not the point. That is not the point. You know it. So you folks came all the way to Cartagena, Colombia, and you don't know a lick of Spanish. Y'all irritate me to my core. So the next set of couples is my personal favorites, Macy and Taylor and Kate and Tyler. And I had to say that very slow because you all know I'll be bumbling over my words all the time on this damn channel. Macy says she cannot believe that she's in Colombia. She's just excited. She says she has no idea what to expect, but this is the hottest place she's ever been. Girl, you never been to Texas? Because girl, Texas in September, and it was the last freaking week of September, and it was damn near 100 degrees. I am not lying. Taylor says this is his first time at the reunion. He's trying to keep an open mind because he doesn't know what's going to happen. So, of course, the producers are asking all of the couples, what do they need to work on? And Taylor says communication. 
Taylor says that he can be very easygoing because he keeps stuff bottled inside, but when it's ready for that pressure cooker to pop, it pops. Macy says that they're good at being a parenting team, but they struggle with the internal stuff and that's why they're there. Pictures in the travel bus. Is there any reason why everybody couldn't come in the same bus at the same time? Because piece by piece, couples by couples really don't make no damn sense. Caitlin, I do love you, but I really hate this hairstyle on you, girl. I'm really sorry. I really hate it. I love the color. The color is amazing. But this hairstyle, this asymmetrical bob joint from the 90s, I'm not feeling this. Caitlin says that she doesn't think that there's anything that both of them need to work on. They done been through counseling. They've been, they done been through hell and back. And she doesn't think there's anything they need to work on. Taylor asks Kate and Tyler, where are the kids? He says they're with his mom. Kate says what they do want to work on is appreciating each other's time. Sitting on the beach, swimming, enjoying vacation. Enjoying vacation, if you get my drift. So Cheyenne is sitting here with Jade and she asks her, how is all the wedding stuff going along? Cause we all leave from here and go to your wedding. And you know, they have to repeat the same damn thing over and over again. So sorry if I'm repeating it. I'm just trying to give you guys a full recap. How's the wedding stuff? Because we all leave from here and go straight to your wedding. We went over our budget, probably like $45,000. Cheyenne says Jade's wedding is $45,000 over budget. And Tracy says, you spending so much money to marry a man and y'all marriage is not going to last a year. Jade says, oh my God, this costs as much as our house. So Jade says that they're definitely over budget. And then she says they're so stressed out about it. You didn't have to spend $45,000 over what you caused your own stress. Jade says that they have their first house on the market. And if that sells, they'll be good financially. I don't know how much more of this damn screaming and yelling I can take. Okay, I have my I have my sound so darn low because all these fools do is act like they're in their freaking teens and 20s and they're out here screaming and yelling. Zach and Sean see Macy and Taylor, Caitlin and Tyler showing up at the compound. Oops, I mean resort. The next set of couples arrive at the resort. Tyler is so excited to have all of the teen mom family in one house. Everybody is greeting each other. Zach is still out there screaming like a freaking crazy person. Zach says his dog, Macy, is here and he really doesn't know Taylor. He says he's looking forward to getting to know Taylor better. And everyone's checking out their rooms. Cheyenne says to Jade, where are Corey and Taylor? I hope they didn't miss their flight. Cheyenne says there are five couples coming today and it's important that Corey and Taylor make it. Cheyenne says that her and Corey definitely have a unique situation. They co-parent their daughter, Ryder, together, and she says they all get along very well. Cheyenne says that she has gotten along with Taylor, and over that time, that has grown into a friendship, and she says the same for Zach and Corey. And lastly, we have Corey and Taylor showing up to the house. First of all, I just want to say Corey is ghastly and annoying. What the hell's wrong with him? Why is he so loud? He is so loud. Him and Zach. Anyway, the reason why him and Taylor are there, they have some things they need to improve in their relationship. Corey says that they want their relationship to be stronger upon leaving than arriving. Taylor says to be a better couple and to be better parents. Taylor Taylor, your face looks very sad right here. Are you guys seeing it? I wonder what's making her so sad. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Interesting. Corey asks Taylor how she thinks her mom is doing with the girls. She says fine. Taylor says that her parents keeping the girls gives her a sense of relief with her being there because she doesn't have to worry about if they're being taken care of well or not. Taylor says with their youngest daughter having so many health issues. She does not have a tricuspid valve in her heart. So part of her heart is missing. So Corey asks Taylor if she's nervous and she says that she is nervous. She says she doesn't really know anybody. The only person that she knows is Cheyenne. Taylor says she's not a teen mom. She's kind of just going into the mix with all of these folks who have been doing this for a very, very long time. She says she's feeling nervous because she feels like an outcast on this one. So Jade is with the crew with all of them and saying that she says she spoke to Cheyenne and both of them feels like it's important for Taylor to feel like she's one of them. Jade says that she doesn't want Taylor to feel like she's just some random person. So before they get to the house, Corey has an idea to get some funny gifts for all the couples. So while Taylor and Corey are off in the gift shop, Cheyenne is sitting here saying that, you know, this reunion is coupled themed because of their one year anniversary coming up, her and Zach. So they're in this place with, and they're in front of these rings, Taylor and Corey, 
and Corey's getting down on one knee and Taylor is over here like, oh my God, she's saying right here in this confessional. Taylor says the first thing that Corey does when we go into the store is grab a ring, pretend that it's funny to act like he's proposing. Corey seems like the type of guy who always want to joke. I can't stand people like that because everything is not always funny 24 hours a day. Corey claims that he was practicing, whatever. Taylor says that they've been together for six years and she wants to get married, but there's issues that they need to work on first. Oh my God, Corey is so freaking embarrassing, starting with these pants, but oh my God. Corey says that he knows what Taylor wants out of this relationship and it's a ring and he knows that. He says he's taking his time a little bit. Six years is not long enough, Corey. See me having two babies from a mother effer and that don't want to marry me. Get the hell out of here. They're obviously bored. They're going to go jump in the pool. I swear to God, I don't want to see anybody naked on this show. I saw the trailer though. Unfortunately, I think that um, my eyes will be assaulted soon. And these guys are acting like they're taking off their damn clothes. And Cheyenne is like, wait, what's happening? Okay, so Sean is the first one that jumps in the pool and praise the Lord Jehovah. He kept his pants on. Excuse me? Cheyenne says she's heard about Ty's OnlyFans. He has a what? This is how you guys can tell that I'm not all up on Teen Mom like I used to be because, frankly, I don't want to be a 24-7 Teen Mom channel. That's not my thing. Yes, I'm going to review the show if I want to, but my channel is about recaps, period. I do recaps of the shows that I like, and I don't just like this show. Tyler has a OnlyFans? Lord, I do not want to see no parts i'm getting chills right now as i'm talking i know y'all can't even see me but i'm getting skeeved out so really let's just please move on and just like me cheyenne says she doesn't want to see it she's heard about the the only fans and she doesn't want to see it and neither do i so Corey is shaking this chair and saying he feels like he's going on the challenge right now and taylor says well we're not calm the hell down taylor says that they're getting ready to go to first of all in the bus Corey is saying, hey, driver, is there any way we can stop and get something to drink? Didn't he just stop for you to go to that um souvenir shop or whatever? Anyway, Taylor says she's already nervous about going into a house with a bunch of different people that she doesn't know. Now Corey wants to stop for a drink. Yeah. He has lost his mind. More screaming and yelling. He Taylor says that Corey has a hard time stopping himself when he's drinking. So MTV, did you really need to give them a bartender in the resort? Because... I'm sure you knew this about Corey before you put him on the show. But you know what? I realize you guys set these people up on purpose for drama's sake. Unbelievable. Taylor says that everybody has their thing when they're drinking. But Taylor says that Corey just keeps drinking and drinking and drinking. Taylor says that he's not helpful right now. And I don't know how you stay with somebody for six entire years who obviously has a drinking problem. I don't even know why you would want to marry somebody like that. Here he goes yelling again. I should just call him drunk bastard for the rest of the season, but I will not do it. I will refrain. <laughs> so Corey comes in yelling and screaming and Macy's like, what is he wearing? Drunk Corey is the most annoying. I swear to God. Taylor, how do you do it? How do you tolerate this man? Corey is ready to turn up the party, turn up the music, turn up his loud freaking mouth. I can't stand all that noise. So now Corey is encouraging Taylor to drink. And Taylor, he had his mouth on that. He be having his mouth. Y'all don't care. Y'all, we adults here. Herpes is real. Macy says, Corey sure does have a lot of energy. This is a lot even for Corey. And um, she has no idea where this night's gonna go. So all y'all drank from the same bottle. Anyway, I have no words. And now Kate is also drinking from that same bottle bottle all y'all is nasty i'm so sorry i don't care how many people drank from that bottle jade says Corey come in late as ever finally girl you don't even know what happened and you over there talking crap cheyenne comes out and says y'all finally here why was y'all so late comes down and greets everybody Corey is still turned the hell up Corey's making a little speechy speech about talking about how everybody took the next step to improve their relationship cheyenne says of course Corey comes in hot. He doesn't know how to sit down and shut the hell up and listen. Cheyenne wants him to take off his damn hat and sit his ass down and realize that he's not the host and he's not in charge. Corey, please sit your drunk ass down somewhere. You're embarrassing me and I'm over here on the other side of the screen and I'm not even watching live. So to make it even worse, Corey's sitting here giving this nonsensical speech and Corey goes on to say this. Yep. We all can say we love our kids. Yep. But yeah. them kids right, right now. Corey, if you don't sit your drunk behind down somewhere and go get sober, I know something. Everybody's laughing and playing it off. Corey, 
I don't care where I'm at. It's never F my kids. I, I know you seriously need to lay off the liquor. That's what I know. And Jade says, you know, you need somebody like Corey in the group with a couples group, you know, like a hype man. No, the hell you don't. No, the hell you don't. Y'all get hype off of y'all own energy. You don't need one person trying to run a party all the time. And Cheyenne, even if Zach just held up the jar or the the bottle for you to have a little liquor from it, five other people already put their mouth on that. So their spit is all in there, girl. Like I said, y'all nasty. So Cheyenne asks, why are you guys late? And now Corey has taken over host duties and he decides that it's time to give out gifts. Sean says Corey came in hot, but he came with some gifts, which he did not expect to be honest. Cheyenne says that they co-parent with Corey and Taylor and so they formed a bond. Cheyenne says that they've had a rough year dealing with their youngest daughter's health. Everything is finally coming to an end. The baby is healthy. And Cheyenne says they put their relationship on hold for the past two years to deal with the baby. And so now they have to deal with themselves. It sounds like Corey needs to deal with himself and his drinking problem. But anyway, maybe I'm just judging based off one episode. Maybe he doesn't have a drinking problem. Maybe, and I'm going to try to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's just this party atmosphere has him lit the hell up. Maybe it's that. So Sean is asking Tyler what he's drinking and he's drinking some type of vodka concoction. And Sean says out of his mouth, I shouldn't even be drinking liquor. And I promise you, MTV, you knew this because we all know if we've been watching MTV for any amount of time, when it involves John and Shade, did I say John and Shade? I'm crazy. Sean and Jade, Sean is a recovering addict and he shouldn't be drinking alcohol. And after Sean says he shouldn't be drinking liquor, Kate says she shouldn't be drinking either. So why are y'all drinking if you're not supposed to be drinking? So Jay tells us that Sean went to treatment about two and a half years ago for substance abuse. So Jade says that his issue was never drinking so he can go to a vacation and have a cocktail or whatever. Girl, I know you know as a as a daughter of addicts that even if someone's issue wasn't alcohol, it would be very easy for them to get an addiction to alcohol coming off of the drugs that they were on. She then continues to say that, you know, she's just here to be supportive. That's pretty much all she can do. Okay, so Zach decides to ask Tyler how he got into OnlyFans. And as you can see, Cheyenne's face is, child, I don't, I don't want to hear this. She has the same expression I have on my face right now, actually. And actually, the answer to that question that Zach just asked was actually Caitlyn got her own husband into OnlyFans. Listen, y'all do y'all thing if that's what works for you. But as for me in my house, we're not doing that, okay? That is for me to look at. That is for me to see. That's not for the world to be paying no subscription to see my man. To me, that's, you know, not covering my spouse. That's me pimping out my spouse. And that's not cute. But if that works for you and Kate, do your thing. I wanted to ask because I want to know kind of if he was showing his whole yada, yada, yada. And Cheyenne says she heard. So she knows that there's pictures of his, P P you know, the letter P. Okay. Okay. I got to watch what I say on this channel. Caitlin says she's the one that created Tyler's OnlyFans. He made his debut on OnlyFans, but it's not what you think. The Teen Mom star recently joined the popular adult social men platform. Sorry, can't talk today. However, he and his wife, Caitlin, maintained that there will be nothing risque or taboo involved. Heard about the pictures. I heard it's bare penis. It's just penis. I don't think they know what the word risque means. So Tyler is over here saying that Caitlin is the wifeager, the manager. You mean the pimp? So Caitlin here is saying that she's the one that set up his page. She runs the page. She's the one that messages people back. You are my pimp. Oh, they agree with me. <laughs> Cheyenne, you're talking about showing his full P, letter P, on OnlyFans like you've seen it for yourself. <laughs> but anyway, Cheyenne is like, how would you like if I put you on Only Faye? I can't say the rest on here. And Zach is like, no. And then Cheyenne is like, well, why would you want to put me on there? And he says, just your feet. <laughs> Zach, it's still S work. Caitlin says, it's about to get us a brand new pool. So, so it's all about money, Caitlin. Okay, girl. Cheyenne changes the topic and asks who's been married the longest. Caitlin and Tyler would be the longest. And then second after them would be Macy and Taylor. Cheyenne says she would love for Corey and Taylor to get married. Have you seen Taylor? How embarrassed she is of freaking Corey? Child, get out of here. Corey said, what makes a marriage a piece of paper? Cheyenne asks Kate, how long have they been married? 
So Kate says that her and Tyler have been married for eight years. Macy and Taylor have been married for seven years. So actually, I thought it was like this huge discrepancy, but it's only a year difference. Taylor says much like everybody in the house, they have kids where they have a lot of activities on the table. Taylor says that you invest so much into your kids that the relationship part gets pushed to the side. Taylor says as hard as it was to get there, it's definitely much needed. So Macy says that it's very important for them to be there because you know, you get so involved with your kids that everything gets pushed to the side as far as your mate. And with that, Caitlin says, I thought this was F them kids. And they get up and they start partying again, partying, AKA drinking. And Taylor says that it's nice to know that other people are in the same predicament that she is where, you know, you have the kids that have activities and all kinds of other things. And they've pretty much been neglecting their own relationship. So now Taylor and Corey are checking out their room. Jade says she's happy that everybody's here and everybody seems very down with this family reunion. So Corey says, y'all know damn well y'all not about to have these cameras in my room. First of all, I didn't know you were allowed to have cameras in the bedroom, especially with couples. Obviously, they're going to be naked. They're going to be walking around. They're going to be doing things. Behind the closed door, Taylor says, you had too much tequila. Cut it out. You know, stop. So Cheyenne says he's having his first tantrum, everybody. And she says that she just learned to block Corey out. I would hope so, because has he always been this way? Like, is he always drunk, first of all? And if he's always drunk, does he act like this? I hope he doesn't act like this around Ryder. I really do. She says she tunes him out so much that it's almost like listening to your brother. She pretty much doesn't hear it. Taylor says that Corey needs to eat something right now because she's been watching him all this time. He's been drinking and drinking, hasn't been eating anything. She says that he needs something because he's spiraling right now. So Cheyenne says that her and Jade planned a welcome party for the night. Didn't y'all just party? Aren't y'all going to be partying the entire time? Why do we need a whole nother separate party? So anyway, Cheyenne says she and Jade have planned a Colombian themed party with drink and other things that she can't mention. And now Corey's sitting here with Taylor and he says this party is going to suck. Taylor basically says Corey is putting her in a bad mood and she's getting frustrated with how he's seemingly not taking this seriously. So Corey asks... Taylor, on a scale from 1 to 10, how much do you love me? And Taylor says, I think you're playing with me. And Corey says, everybody has this effed up perception of me. I wonder, I wonder freaking why, Corey. I wonder why. Taylor says, I love you very, very much, but right now you need to chill. Corey then says that wasn't very convincing. And this is Taylor's face after he says that. Because she's tired of his crap. And then she says, this is exactly why I'm not effing talking to you right now. Corey says, why? And Taylor says, because you're on one. Homegirl's picking up her food, taking her drink, and getting the hell away from this man. And maybe you need to get away from him permanently, girl. Because if this is how he is all the time, I can't say this is somebody that I would want to be with. She says, no, because you do this crap to me. And then she got up and she left. Taylor says that her and Corey met on a show on MTV called X on the Beach. And they were young and they were, I don't want to say dumb, but <laughs> yeah. Taylor says that she's grown up a lot since then, but Corey is still a party animal. Corey, you is too damn old to still be trying to act like you are life of the party and you in your damn 20s. You are 33 entire years old. I thought I was going to come here and see that you was in your 20s. You was born in 1991. I'm going to need you to act your damn age and stop trying to act like you're still young. Because you're still young, technically, but you ain't that damn young. She says Corey is still a party animal and she is not at all. So now... Corey and Taylor are in the bedroom having a disagreement, an argument, the first argument of the freaking season on day one, on night one. This is crazy. Taylor's telling Corey that she doesn't want to talk about this right now. And of course, Corey's pushing back because he wants to talk about it. Taylor tells Corey that he's drunk. Did he just say, if you think this is as effed up as I'm going to get, you got me effed up? Taylor, I'm packing my bags and I'm flying back home. He can finish this show on his own. That's what he can do. Because that's freaking crazy. So the other couples are really like, what the hell's going on up there? Taylor tells Corey to calm down. Oh my God. You know, reality show never ceases to amaze me. And... Corey then says to her, look, we're shooting a TV show. And he breaks the third wall, first wall, second wall. I don't know. You can put it in the comment section. I don't know what the other wall is, damn it. But <laughs> I think it's the third wall. And he literally comes up to the camera looking at us and says, Yes, you. Yes, you. Yes, all these right here. We're shooting a TV show. But what I'm saying is don't act like I got nervous. Two seconds away from just leaving. Listen, babe. Taylor gets angry. And she says she's seconds away from just leaving and slams the freaking door. 
I am really sorry. I had to go buy the damn season on Prime because trying to do this on MTV.com, as y'all can see, has a little freaking triangle when I pause the show and I ain't got time. Also, I ain't got time for ads. They were getting on my damn nerves. So anyway, Corey decides to open back that damn bathroom door, go in there and finish this argument. They're out here. And Zach, are you, you asking who it is that's arguing? I know you can tell who the hell that is arguing. I mean, you hear his voice all the time. I mean, y'all are best buddies and all. Listen. Zach is saying, oh, I've seen him on a happy fun note. I'm trying to figure out what the problem is. Zach, it's called alcohol. You know, sometimes people are, what I know, because I'm not an alcoholic, I've never really been into alcohol. I think it tastes disgusting myself, honestly. But uh, from what I hear, there is such thing as an angry drunk and there's happy drunks. Your buddy there seems to be the latter. So now Jade is a psychotherapist. Girl, sit your down. Oh, you're already sitting down. You're laying down. Whatever. Um... She's saying that this could have something to do with the fact that they were dealing with the baby and yada, yada, yada. Listen, I'm not saying that it couldn't be that because maybe in some instances, people use alcohol just like they use drugs, just like they use money, shopping and all that. They use those things to make them feel better and to make them forget about the things going on in their real life. So I'm not going to say no, but in this instance, there's only one reason why he's in a rage, and it is liquor. Corey finally leaves Taylor alone and walks out the bathroom saying some bull crap about this is why I do what I do. Anyway, he's here now, probably sober at this point and looking back on that situation. You know how they do in reality shows saying, oh, I think Taylor was upset because I was upset. Taylor was upset because you were an a-hole. I don't know if you saw yourself in that clip when you look back, but you weren't being your best self, Corey. And I don't even know you that well. And I know that wasn't your best self. Corey says that he's always had an anger problem and he gave her her space because he needed his space. And then Corey says, maybe I did something dumb. Taylor does not like when I drink like that. Thank you for admitting that. Okay. Because I thought you were going to be in a complete delulu this entire episode, but you admitted that you know that she doesn't like when you drink. So Cheyenne goes to check in on Taylor because Taylor was upset. She's in there crying over this crap, which is freaking crazy. Is this how the, is this how the season's going to start really? Because I can only imagine that it's not going to get better from here. Cheyenne says that she doesn't want Taylor to be more uncomfortable because of this argument that she had with Corey. And girl, I would have, I would have definitely been embarrassed. I mean, all y'all can hear what's going on. So why wouldn't she be uncomfortable? So Taylor asks, is he here? And Cheyenne says, no, she thinks that he went to the beach. And Taylor's like, we've only been here four hours and they're already freaking fighting. I mean, I feel really stupid saying what she's saying when you guys can read it on the screen. But for those of you that cannot or unable to right now to read it on the screen, Taylor is saying to Cheyenne that Corey doesn't think that he's doing anything wrong. Taylor says that Cheyenne came to check on her and she feels a comfort with her because she was the one, you know, checking on her when they were having the issues with baby Maya. Taylor says that her and Cheyenne are always texting and they're always talking to each other. Taylor says she is really trying, Cheyenne, that is, is really trying to calm her down. Cheyenne says to Taylor, the longer you stay in here, the worse other people are going to make it out to be. Cheyenne, I know you mean well, but if I was in that group of people, we're going to talk about y'all regardless. Okay? Even if it's in, our, in the privacy of our bedrooms, we're going to talk about y'all. Cheyenne says it's hard seeing Taylor upset about the things that Corey's doing. But she says as her friend, she's here to give a listening ear and she wants Taylor to relax and just enjoy herself. So Cheyenne asks everybody if they can wait an extra five minutes for Taylor to gather herself so they can go out and have a conversation. Jade says that she can tell by Taylor's body language that she has just shut down after that whole argument. And Jade says that she feels that all of them can understand where she's coming from. Zach says he doesn't know what's going on with Corey and them, but he just knows when he came to pick up Ryder, when he came back after dealing with Maya in that entire situation, he just came back a different person. So now the girls are out here having a little conversation. I could have went a million years not knowing that Jay shaves her coochie hairs in the sink. You know what? I'm ready to turn this off. I'm just letting y'all know. Taylor says she really didn't need to know that about Jay. She didn't know they were going to have that type of conversation. But she's glad that the girls rallied around her and just tried to get her mind off of Corey. Now this conversation is about, I don't even know how to say this for YouTube. I really don't. I'm just going to say shaving shapes of areas. Okay, can we please move past this? Because I ain't want to hear this either. 
Taylor's like, oh, great. There he is. Can't even have a conversation with just the girls. Taylor says he thinks that is just going to make up for everything that happened. And Caitlin says, yeah, he comes in here with flowers that were already in the room. He didn't go out and get them from anywhere. And Corey says to Taylor, come over here and let me talk to you for a second. Macy's face says what everybody is thinking. Cheyenne says she hopes that this is not the normal way that Corey goes about apologizing to Taylor. Well, Taylor says she's trying to ignore Corey right now, but he's hard to ignore. Corey asks Taylor if she's okay, and she says no. And Taylor tells her it's okay for you not to be okay. Corey, please go take a nap. You're annoying. Cheyenne says behind the BS flowers and champagne, she's glad that Corey took Taylor to the side to have a conversation, and she hopes something good comes out of it. So now Taylor is crying, and Corey is saying, I'm sorry if I'm stressing you out. Taylor says that it's already hard for her to be here she says it's the first day and it's not going great and then Corey says you know that's why i'm here to work on us Corey says he knows he effed up today he came in hot and he knows that it's time to cool down Corey says that this year has been a huge struggle for them with all of their baby's issues and Corey says you know that i'm annoying and taylor says yes but there are different levels and she says there are levels i can deal with and there are levels that i can't deal with and she says she's not down to be having deep conversations when both of them have been drinking she says she doesn't think that's productive at all and he says he agrees taylor says she already has anxiety and Corey says i get it and i'm not helping it Taylor says that she's happy, he's apologizing, and she accepts it, but he needs to sober up and they need to take care of the other issues. Corey says that he can feel when he hugs her that the feeling is not there and he wants to feel like it's there. Taylor says, it's not that it's not there. She says, sometimes I think you forget that I always have three children always on me. Taylor says that she doesn't have a second to herself ever. And she says, when does she get that? And Corey says, no, she doesn't. Corey, what the hell are you doing? while she's here with all these kids. Then you guys have Maya who had difficulty with her health. And then you have the other baby girl who's Mila, I think her name is. Why are we not mentioning names on this show? Anyway, y'all having kids with these men that aren't helping you take care of these kids. I'm pretty sure Corey wasn't helping you with the first child. And now you have a second child and you're saying you don't get a minute's peace to yourself. What the F is Corey doing? And why is he sitting here? Oh, yeah, I agree. You're not getting what you need. So then why are you not giving her what she needs? Why are you not giving her what she needs? That's all I really want to know. And Corey says, that's why we're here to find things that do work. What, what will work is you helping her sometimes. I can give you that, that advice. And Corey says to Taylor that he wants to see that spark back in her, wants her to see her happy again. He says the person he fell in love with on X on the beach eight years ago. It was six years ago, as you can see. And Corey says how he's happy that she's opening up. And I thought you said you guys weren't going to have any conversations while one of you is intoxicated. I know he ain't fully sober right now. Taylor says that once they have an argument, Corey usually comes and apologizes to her. But if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and apologizing, then fool, you is not sorry. Period. You ain't sorry. So anyway, Corey says, I hope you're locked in because I'm locked in too. And then... Taylor jokingly puts her ring finger up. Girl, I know you not even signaling no marriage with this fool right now because he obviously is not ready. And here we go with the I love yous. We're going to hear a lot of that in this season. So everybody is getting ready for this Colombian party, a Colombian themed pool party. And you guys know how much I love watching people party while I'm sitting here with no party no nothing going on over here. Sean says that he didn't expect the vibe to be so good. It's great seeing everybody get along. Are we watching the same show? Cheyenne thanks everyone for coming, saying that her and Jade hosted this and hopes that everybody gets something out of it. And cue the beautiful Colombian dancers. Everybody's dancing and having fun. I'm sorry if I don't sound so excited. So Corey is curious about who these extra bedrooms in here are for. And Cheyenne says she ain't inviting him next year. And girl, I hope you don't. And we end the show with... A surprise, the last surprise will be somebody or some people coming, but nobody knows who it is. Corey's right here saying, come on in. Everybody's looking around. And that, of course, is when MTV decides. And as usual, MTV loves to leave us on a suspenseful note. And with that, I am finally done. I am done with this recap. We have six more episodes to breeze through. Not saying I'm posting them all today. You better keep on the lookout this week. Y'all know I catch up on my stuff. Okay. And I will catch up. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.